Welcome to another episode of The Adventures of Danny and Mike, wherein the fellas discuss kangaroo boxing, the January gloom, and listening to your body. Now play the music, pasty. For the listener. <laughs> Take it easy, brother. We had a live show where Mike uh, got a call from his super about his washing machine. So everyone, his washing machine is fixed. Crisis. Congratulations. Over. It doesn't Michael. help us now in the studio with his stinky clothes. Uh, well, we will. Next episode will be fresh. Wait, so Jeremy, clean. do you have a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dude. <laughs> okay. Dude, is that your body? It's hot in here. That's your body. It is hot in here. So please don't take off all your clothes. Okay. Uh-huh. I said, please don't. Oh, don't. don't. Do not. D O N apostrophe. Do not. Why? Don't. Why? Why would that be weird? If I just pop my shirt off? No, it actually wouldn't be weird. If you just pop your shirt off, it would just be uncomfortable. If I do it, just will stop you guys there. do it? No, just stop there, though. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do pants. That's a little. Yeah. That's a little. That's that gets. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But. Maybe we could record the podcast by the pool. I'm doing it. Oh my god. First ever shirtless podcast, ladies oh and gentlemen. My God. Two Come thirds, on, Dan. Two thirds shirtless. Oh. Peer pressure. Uh, Peer while you're doing has that. been brought to bear. Uh, this is pretty cool. Okay. Oh my God. I, I tell so you what, I feel better. Huh? Yeah, I do yeah. feel better. Yeah. First ever shirtless podcast, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Yeah, it's a new world. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to get used to this. You I don't. don't. No, I don't want to be shirtless. I all think. The time. I like, think it was good that we didn't book a guest. Though. I was gonna say. Yeah. 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 It's probably yeah. Add gr- a guest in this. And probably it's not, great. Not as it's probably good. great yeah. that we didn't put it. Yeah. Book a guest. Yeah. Why are you doing this stuff? That's yeah. cool. They're doing yeah. some Pilates. Uh, <laughs> while they're no, doing no, no, that, no, we're just doing working envelope. Yeah. Let's um, go ahead and set this up. Welcome to the Adventures of Danny and Mike shirtless episode. To my right, Mr. Michael C. Morona. Yeah. The Harry. C. Say, the C stands for chest hair. <laughs> and to his right, Mr. Danny Tamborelli. Uh, the P, which is my middle name. Initial stands for. Uh, you, you had a lot of time. Props. <laughs> I don't know why. How are you, gentlemen? What is going on? Wow. Yeah. It's weird to podcast without shirts on. Shirtless <laughs> podcast. It's not that weird. It's not that it's weird. weird. It's weird. It's funny. All everybody's eyes are up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I took the. Uh, yeah, this is going to be the most present podcast we've ever done. <laughs> uh, what is. Um, What's what's going what's on here? Michael is pointing. Doing, doing this stuff. Oh, oh, oh yeah, the old uh, yeah. That's a game that's made a big comeback. Uh, yeah, when I was but it in makes school, it come back uh, is like people mistaking it for white power signs. That's weird. Yeah, so that's fucked yeah. Up. For the listener, Michael had uh, gotten Danny on a uh, punch punch. Starting over on the circle. podcast. Welcome to the adventures of Danny. <laughs> Let's just start this one over. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> gentlemen, uh, I'd like to extend a hello. I'd like to. Um, Put Same. a shirt back on, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, or just like covering the mid mid my midsection. If I just had a paper towel, like what are those called? A, Scrunchies or like a band a bandeau that women wear. The tube boost? top. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> paper towel tube top. I think a paper towel tube top on Jeremy would make me more uncomfortable than shirtless <laughs> Jeremy right now. Paper towel tube top. Wow, wow! So you can go to Jethro Tull. Oh, just like that. No, huh? I always keep. I always keep. Don't aqua do it, off. man. Don't please don't. For I think he's making pasties. For the listener, he's just making he's just paper making towel paper pasties. Paper towel pasties. Oh, actually, paper towels. If you're tissue. uncomfortable with my nips, I've covered them with wet paper towels. I yeah, but I'm actually more uncomfortable with the paper towels. Than yeah, you've got, <laughs> booby, you've got tassels right yeah, now. I know. This yeah, reminds me of it. us going back to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> We're at Mary's. Back uh, to the first episode. I want to go to Portland with you guys. I want to put that. Sorry, we already did it, Jeremy. No. You know, you know that was great. Um, people were like drinking outside at the outdoor uh, at the like the tables outside the bar, uh-huh. and it was like if you were standing up, you couldn't drink. You had to sit at the table to drink. Yes, that was because weird. we were standing on the sidewalk, one foot from the tables. Laws, and now they don't know how to pump their own gas, and, and shit's getting hectic over there. Do you think you're going to take some people, like a support group from Jersey to Oregon, and be like, "This is how you do"? I will hear from no, my... Jersey. Don't we don't we. Don't pump our own gas. Sure you do. No, we don't. No, we don't pump like... our own gas. 
but I do get out of the car and I go to start pumping my own gas if they do not get there in the uh, allotted amount of time that I think they should get to my you're, car. You're an impatient fueler. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I, and I also feel like I'm doing them a favor. I'm not getting paid for being there to do it. I'm just doing it. I'm helping right. you out. You got a bunch of other cars to deal with right. it. Right, right. I just need to swipe your card thing, please. Plus, yeah. <laughs> I feel like they get a cut of that somehow, though, and the price is more, right? It's more to for, sell, for full serve, I think. Uh, it's cash or credit. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's cash or credit. There's no there's no self-serve in New Jersey. It does not exist. I'm glad we got that. <clears throat> the limit does not exist. Cash. Yeah. So how are you, gentlemen? We're in our post-holiday... Uh, Shirtless fest. <laughs> Shirtless fest. I think we can really see what the holiday has wrought on us here by looking at our upper bodies. I'm good. I I didn't gain any weight. You're looking really? good. I didn't gain any, a single pound. How's the meds? Well, maybe I did. But now I'm Ooh, back. Oh, med up. update. How's the meds? Meds are Ooh. meds are good. Meds, meds are good. Meds are good. I uh, personally feel feel really good. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I'm a believer and a believer and a uh, preacher of uh, of tweaking your mental health if. Uh, if you maybe maybe not the word tweak is not the best. Uh, maybe that's not the best uh, description. But I would say, especially with your two exposed nipples right now. Uh, wow. Well, luckily, God, so. for the listener, this is uh, I'm I'm it's I'm having trouble. Well, I'm we'll seeing we're only we're breathing? only nine we're only ten minutes in. I'm not having we're trouble breathing. Breathing. My, my Both breathing is Mike good. and I are have our legs crossed and our arms on our legs, and we were very comfortable with I, this. So I, I don't know. I why think we you both are. look like That's we're great. at the Dick Cavett show doing an interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sony Pop. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Swingers. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I'm fine. I'm glad your brain's good. You were saying feeling very good. Yeah. The, I, I think the doc wants to up mine, but I'm really, I'm really, really? Hold, yeah, I'm holding on tight. I feel like I run the, I steer the. Ship You're the my, Osiris of this ship? You are the Osiris of this ship? I think so. Uh, just because he... I mean, obviously, I fill him in and talk about stuff, but it, it, I, it's kind of up to me whether... You know, and I think it probably should be, right? Like, if You're you the feel, only one inside your head. Yeah. Except for yeah. Quasmodiar. You yeah. Know. But, yeah. Uh, med, med update. Health check. I'm giving it a B plus. Uh, I feel like B+. I'm okay. That's I feel good. like That's I'm okay really too. Good. I feel I'm okay too. Yeah, That's just great, so you know. guys. I haven't been back for a cholesterol check in a while, but mm. Mm. how's the bacon eating? And the uh, is that uh, your, your ration? Your rations? I sent I sent a Christmas card to the bacon dealer, and uh, <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen her since uh, the the farmers market was closed last week owing to the uh, biblical snow proportions. Wow. So. I guess I'll see maybe hopefully next weekend whether uh, whether she got the Christmas card. Mm. But for the listener, he's itching already. Like there's a definitely an addictive thing about his bacon dealer. He's I like, like bacon. yeah, I haven't mm. been there. Got to get there next week. <laughs> yeah, I I think I used up my 2017 bacon this year, so I'm ready for some more. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Wait for that farmer's market. I'm glad you guys are doing well. How about uh, yeah, they, and you're doing you? great with your with your stuff. It sounds like you're. No, I mean, I feel good. I'm doing, I'm just doing myself, but, uh... Still in the large? Gross. Still in the large, and, yeah, I'm not, that's, I feel like that's, like, I don't even think about it anymore. I'm just, it's completely it's, changed my eating habits life, and everything. Is, like, I know is, what I'm doing, and I can roll through Christmas and eat what I want, and... An acai bowl? <clears throat> and take a couple is, is days it? off at the beginning of the year, and, like, I don't, I feel good. Everything's good. Everything's good. In my body, physically, Good. is how I feel. But, you know, January uh, and the end of Christmas, and every, there's a lot of shit going on in my own personal life. That, mm -hmm. You know. Well, we're here to talk. Yeah. I mean. We're here to listen. Yeah, I want you. Yeah, it's good to. It's I learned a lot about my health and, like, what you should and shouldn't be doing and how you should listen to your body. Because my dad uh, was having, like, the GERD. That's what this general, his general practitioner, he's like having this like, uh, well, it's probably just GERD acid reflux. And he went to his, his, his GP and he was like, Hey, you know, like this, this making me feel weird. I'm not sure what it is. And he was like, ah, it's just GERD. Don't worry about it. Like Irish doctor. It's just a touch of the GERD. Oh, you got to pitch oh, the, the GERD. Touch of the GERD. Touch of the GERD. Touch of the GERD. Listen to me. I tell you, you got to touch of the GERD. Touch you of the GERD. You give yourself a bit of. 
You give yourself some of that Alka Seltzer. It'll take care of it right some, away. Some sour cream and an Alka Seltzer and just muddy well, them. Make sure together. you get yourself a six pack of Guinness too, while you don't you? Well, it won't do you any harm at all. No, have no, one no. Do you know that back in the turn of the century, they used to give babies. six pack of Guinness to the mothers so they can get their protein back? Yeah, and the babies would have it if the mothers oh, were yes. sleeping. Oh, yes. Baby, well, the babies would get it from the mother's teat. So, what did uh, Dr. McGillicuddy <laughs> have to tell you? Your, uh, your father. No, he told my dad that it was good and don't worry about it. And my dad, like, didn't feel. Like, that was sufficient for him. He w- got back in the car and was like, I think it's something else. Like, I don't think it's that. Like, he knows what he eats and, like... Mm-hmm. He didn't he eat any GERD that week, so... What no, but fuck? I think... No, but it's like it's like you're eating a lot of, like, acidic things or, like, you know, spicy things. Clement- night, Clementines like, are in season this time of year. R- true, true. But, he, you know, he was just... He just didn't think it was that. So he went and he called his cardiologist, and they went and they did a stress test, and he failed the stress test. Mm. He didn't have enough assets. It was like the bank, the big banks. <laughs> he just didn't, yeah. He just, he, so he didn't think anything. I mean, he, at 42, was like one of the f- first people that got a stent in his heart. Oh, I didn't know. So in 97, he got a stent put in, which is like a, sort of a new thing. So he was born so in he, 1945. So he assumed 55. that, he assumed, yes, he was. Uh, he assumed that uh, he might have to get that replaced because he's had it in for 20 years and it's only good for like 10 or 15 or 15 years or something right. like that. And so they do the... Uh, angioplasty. An angiogram on him and they're like, yeah, no, it's the, while well, the stint is fucked. You can't get on there unless you're old. You can't be on <laughs> angiogram. Just, like young people are not allowed yeah, on the, the site. Yeah, really? Young people, it's Instagram, yeah. yeah. Oh, old oh, people oh, is angiogram. Oh, it's yeah. angiogram. Oh. Sponsored well, by they, Angie's they list. took a they 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 did this angiogram and like were immediately like nope it's not the stint we can't do a little procedure like you have massive clogged arteries like wow. you're the widow maker one was ninety eight percent clogged the secondary the car, one the coronary artery yeah the <laughs> secondary Shit, artery was ninety two percent clogged and his third major artery was eighty nine percent clogged so he was just like a walking heart attack. You need to send the teenage mutant ninja turtles in there, fucking blow that like shit out of there. Crazy it. shit, but like you know, like think about it, like you put stock in what your normal doctor will tell you, and like you got this information, told my par- uh, my mom, and then you know that got to like my brother in law, and it was going to snow the next day. And it did. It snowed like three inches in Jersey the next day. And uh, so my brother-in-law went to go over and mm-hmm. clear the snow. And he goes in the garage and the fucking snowblower doesn't work. Like, so if my dad didn't listen to his body and didn't call mm-hmm. a cardiologist and set up an appointment the day that he did it. He would have died of a heart attack. He would have fucking, shoveling he would have been, he would have opened up the fucking garage. He would have been fucking around with the snowmo- uh, uh, snow blower and like. Get pissed off at that, so immediately, like, in a bad place. Cortisol, go, cortisol levels go up. Then go take, you know, a shovel and shovel the fucking right. driveway in the front and the back, and he would have been a statistic and had a massive fucking coronary and fucking died. Okay, so we're glad that he's still here. Yes. Yeah. It's just one of, the, it's just like, it was one of those crazy things to think about. Like, that is, like, exactly what would, it would have been like, and that's the story on the news. Like, every time there's a big snowstorm, yeah. someone is outside fucking shoveling and they have a heart attack and die. You would have had a fat lawsuit against Gerd McGillicuddy, though. Maybe, but maybe not. Like, I don't know how, I don't honestly know how that works. I got you. You know, like, you could just say something. I mean, t- tons of people say they want second opinions. And you know, and, but, like, and that's that like, and work? it's psychological. It's very psychological right? in the in the age of this insurance. I'm for still sure. sweating. I, I think I'm gonna cover up. What? No. no. Okay. Absolutely. All right. I won't. Dude, we're gonna have to okay. start over the the podcast. Okay. okay. All right. All right. I won't. I won't. Do you, you feel know, weird talking to s- about this without a shirt on? I mean, I didn't think about it. Until he's he's just laying now. his heart bare. He's wearing, really wearing I'm his heart on his sleeve. Really wearing my heart on my sleeve for everybody. But that's a crazy thing. And he went in. He had a six. Bypass surgery. Sex tuple. A sex tuple wow. bypass surgery. And they cleaned him out, and he's good, and he's home. He only spent six days in the hospital. And That's great. And he's, like, you know, just got cleared to do, like, minor exercise and, like... Good. Just organized, so it's all just walkthroughs, but not organized team activities. Yeah, like two, like literally, like two you can days. get on like two or three minutes, like three or four times a day on the treadmill, like that kind of shit, like very loose. Right. And he, yeah, I man, he's doing, he's doing good. That's so awesome. that's, that's, that's good. But during all that, like right after Christmas, I was back in PA getting, 
you know, and actually, like, the real, the real issue, too, is, like, my sisters don't think that, because I live in Brooklyn, and it's hard for me to get back there, and, like, I have other shit happening here that, they, like, they don't think you and like they them. live there, and they have to take the brunt of, like, you know, my mom needs help, like, doing yeah. shit, my dad can't lift stuff, and, like, yeah. they have to be more around, and they're, like, you know, you're the oldest, and, like, you're supposed to be, like, directing all of this and like I you know it's it's hard for me to do that like I get back when I can like I see right. him and I'll spend the day there and like I'm all in these things same spot where it's like you're, you're sort of you're closer obviously but it's still a remote right but thing it's yeah it's still like, like yeah. yeah it's 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 just rough and like I don't mean it in a way like oh I don't want to see my dad like and help him out like of course that's all I want to do but like yeah. you know it's been fucking snowy here and it's hard to get the car out and drive around and like all those things is just like you know well, luckily, like luckily he's he's on a good trajectory. Yeah, no, and, and that's what what people worry about is like depression. Honestly, what they like, oh really is like people that have like massive surgeries like that like fall into bouts of like short term or long term depression because they're like, you know, maybe stuck inside. Or you should get him. Feel you should get him a, a PS three sixty. But my. <laughs> Or but, just tell him to listen to our podcast. Yeah, that's we'll true. Plenty, it, plenty of... Uh... But my dad, he, you know, he's like, I. he recognizes the fact, he's like, I could be dead. Like, I'm not getting, I don't feel like I'm depressed. Like, I'm grateful. grateful. I'm grateful yeah. and, like, thankful that I'm fucking here. Like, you know, those are, like, really serious. Absolutely. Serious things. But while I was back with Kate's family in PA and we were doing stuff for the wedding... Uh, gathering, gathering, gathering yeah, cured meats gathering, together from shady maples. Meats, mm. Gathering uh, delicious, like uh, you know, spreads for the uh, that everybody gets to walk out with from like a really cool. You can get some cool apple butter kind of stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm giving away the secrets. So I don't care. Wow. Kate might be pissed, but she don't listen anyway. That's cool. I love, I love <laughs> apple. Bu- I love apple butter. Kate stopped listening when I when I talked about her once, and she's like, I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> So I admire that. You know, it is what it is. But we were in this antique store, and I get a text message from a friend in California who I don't like. You know, talk to that much when I go out to California. You met you actually. You guys met Chet. Yep. Yeah, you met Chet. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. I remember Chet. Um, and he just sent me a text, and he's like, "I heard about Casey, and I'm really sorry. Like, I, like I don't know. Like, you know, I wanted to get in touch with his family or whatever, and I was just like, what." And so you got blindsided. So right? totally blindsided, you got blindsided in, in, that in this thing. And I was like, what, like, what, you know, uh, like obviously someone found, you know, like something bad happened to him. And the first thing I did was go on fucking Facebook because I know that's how, how someone in California knows that someone in Jersey that, that they haven't talked that one to of their, in 20 years. Their relatives is racist usually, but, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but the, you know. That was like a a shock to me. That was a me. tough way to find out, right? Yeah, it's super tough. Like, you know, I don't like I don't like finding out bad shit either way, but like to like hear it in a text and then have to like verify it via fucking Facebook yeah. really like Yeah. And it was sad because like his sister didn't want to like, you know, his sister was trying to like get in touch with all of us. Because he, you know... So you didn't get blindsided. So I didn't get blindsided, exactly. And then somebody, like, posted on Twitter, like, R.I.P. Casey. Isn't like, that you're, weird? You're, like, yeah. on Facebook or whatever. It's just very strange. It's like... It's, yeah. Like, if no one is speaking about it, and, like, the family hasn't even talked about it, what gives you the right to, like, no, yeah, right. say that? Yeah. There's no... Like, it's really, like, it's it's despicable. It's like, what are you trying... Like, what sort of attention are you looking for? Or, like mm-hmm. I had... I was in like, my freshman year of college. Um, I had just been away for a few weeks, and I got an email from my uncle that was like, sorry about your dad, and I didn't know what was up. And then after that, I found out that my dad had cancer. Holy oh, shit. God. Yeah. I mean... My uncle didn't know. Right. It was just common yeah. knowledge. It was right. just knowledge inside right. my family. But wow. I had, like, that was, I was kind of like, yeah. I had a little feeling of dread there for a bit. That yeah, didn't go away for a year and a half. Right. Yeah. No, that shit's harsh, man. And it's, I mean, I guess putting it into, once you have your dad go through that and then one of your good friends from your childhood, you know, pass back away. Back to back. Right. Like that. Must because I remember I was having like I think when I hit a certain age forty ish or something I start having sort of the mortality debate inside of my head or like or just with family you know just like just like you know I'm here <laughs> for the moment like you know what if what if that changes who does you know what I mean like 
it's it's crazy to Who's get, gonna a full get my stuff. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, you guys can have. I want your flan. I want some of your flannels. Ooh, okay. Yeah, just that, just that black and white one. I actually. love that one. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Dana, you get the fridge. Yeah, I'll take the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's like we're gonna uh, start a store in Greenpoint called Flannel and Fridge. Yeah, it would sell. Just put the plus between them, though, right? It, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a no brainer. Um, but anyway, I think the older we get, the uh, the more that sort of perspective really hits home and you I can't imagine yeah, your holiday it's season it's definitely like yeah when you think about like having to like take care of my dad you know or mm-hmm. like going you know doing all the things where you can't lift stuff like all these things and being like you know you're not old enough for me to have to take care of you yet and this is just like a you yeah. know foreshadowing to later in life if you there's know. no there's no um, hard and fast line though you know what I mean I remember going back to college again I remember doing uh in my junior year, I did a, a documentary about how old people drive and, you know, went and took an AARP defensive driving class and met with a lot of old people. And it's just your faculties go at different times. Everybody's body. Right. Yeah, oh, dude, my Uncle Joe is, totally is different time. three months shy and 90 years old. He fucking drives 20 minutes from where he lives to my parents' house almost every Sunday for dinner. Can he pick me up from the New Jersey Transit? <laughs> he could. Okay, cool. He's got to keep it when it's daytime. He likes to leave a little before, you know, 5 o'clock. Don't so like driving at night. Don't I totally like driving at night. Out. Totally yeah. understand. Yeah. And that's, you know, he's got he's yeah. got it. And that's like, it. People knowing their own limits as they encounter as, them. Right. And not denying them. Right. right. No, no, no. He used to embrace, and I think that's why he's 89 years old. Like, he's, you know, he's totally, he's in it, yeah. you know. But... Casey was 36 years old, a fucking Brazilian jiu-jitsu teacher, owned his own business that he had been wanting to do for a long time. Like, he started, like, as just a uh, like a wrestling guy in high school, and then it turned to, like, wanted to do UFC stuff, and then got into, like, Muay Thai, and then got into Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and, like, really was into it, and, like, worked his way all the way up and became a teacher at another school, and then... He just, like, his Opened whole thing his was just, dojo. like, he just wanted to open up his own place, yeah. And he finally did, and, like, you know, you, he, he, he was the, our consummate meathead friend, you know, like, the one guy that, like, and not in, like, a stupid meathead way, but, like. I think he means reliable He meathead. was, well, he was one of the most reliable people I ever met. Like, he was, he really was, and, like, good person, and, and, like. He had his own weird way of, you know, we used to say he had coos logic because he would say things that made no, entirely no sense to anybody else but him, but he knew that it was his way of doing it. Mm-hmm. But, like, he was stubborn and someone that, you know, as a UFC-trained guy and, like, took a lot of abuse and a lot of hits and, like, probably his body at the, you know, like, my body hurts and I don't, sometimes and I don't fucking do anything. And... Because you're in that mindset of like, you know, doing UFC stuff and tapping out and like trying to like mentally go through like physical pain to like reach that other level. Like he was having like, you know, issues with his wrist and like other things. And like he wasn't on drugs. He wasn't someone like doing like Percocets or painkillers like that. But You know that's bad for your body. But he took a lot of ibuprofen and he was taking he was taking extra strength ibuprofen. And, you know, typical, I just can, I just, you know, as someone who's known him since I was 11 years old, I just know, like, he would be like, ow, my wrist hurts. Take right. a pill. My wrist doesn't hurt. Awesome. Go on with the day. Teach my class. Do everything I need to do. Go home. Ow, my wrist hurts. Pop an ibuprofen. Ah, oh, it's better now. And, like, that cycle continued, and he must have gotten a... a like a, a a stomach ulcer or something, and on the ibuprofen bottles it says it can cause bleeding ulcers yep. and bleeding, mm. and it's and it's not it's not you know specific to everybody, but like some people are more prone to it than others. I'm sure there are other people that he was around that were popping just as many ibuprofen with no right. extra effect, but for him it it did something to him, and yeah, he just he wasn't well and like. He was just masking it and was at like a holiday party for his own school like two days before and then like woke up in the middle of the night not feeling well and his girlfriend was like, you know, yeah, right, whatever. And he was just like, I just need some time. Like, let this leave me like, Mm -hmm. you know, he just was feeling real shitty and he went to sleep and he never woke up and she woke up and he was unresponsive and then Uh. went to the hospital and that was it. And like. It's one of those things where, you know, I can just know that it's just like, 
stubborn Casey, like just, mm. you know, I don't, it's not a big deal. It's like my wrist hurts or my, you know, he's just had a stomach ache. If he had an ulcer, like he's just like, yeah, my stomach hurts. Like whatever. Like I ate something bad or like whatever it is, it'll get right. better. And like didn't take care of it. And something that, you know, was preventable right. can lead to something real bad happening. And like, that's another thing that it was just like compounded. Like my dad, like a uh, preventative effort, Casey ignored it and now he's not here. Mm-hmm. So address what your body is telling you. It really, like yeah. I not, I, you know, I don't want to be someone who's preachy and like do that, but I really think that's something like I, I keep thinking about it now and like, and, and I'm hypersensitive to it. Like right now right. I'm like, Oh, I've something feels a little funky. Like maybe I should get it checked out right now, but it's nothing. You're it's not wearing like, a shirt. That's right. You're oh, not wearing yeah. a shirt. I, I hate to be a bare chested preacher, Danny, but you're <laughs> yeah. uh, you're not wearing a shirt right now. And uh, yeah, don't uh, just don't let it your lie. Bodies. Yeah, don't just let it listen lie. Listen to your body. Yeah, take care please. of it. Take yeah. care of it now. Big shout out to Jeff Martin, who's a Danny and Mike listener and a man. Yes, Boots Jeff fan. Martin. Uh, he's yes. Been, he's a, he's. I'm sure he, we've interacted on social media. He definitely so interacted have, through social media. He actually, I met him and his brother in Sacramento when Jones mm-hmm. played a show up there, and yeah. They're very good people, and they love the show. Yeah, and yeah, he just uh, just walked for the first time in two months, and yeah. he's doing doing better. So shout out to Jeff. Yeah. The sub, shout out to physical therapy and sticking with it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Believe so. in yourself. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like January episodes are always our heavy ones. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? Well, you know, my dad died we, of cancer. Yeah, uh, in January. Mm, no, and. Six days before Christmas. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've never liked Christmas. Well, I can see why. <laughs> yeah. yeah, never a yeah. fan. Well, even before that, when we were kids, like my sister's friend's mom died on close to Christmas oh, as well. Wow. So just got colored. Yeah. Yeah. But we're in January now. <laughs> yeah, we're past That's Christmas. True. The we uh, are past. the Christmas we tree is still up. We did not dump it in the uh, in the old McCarran Park compost pile this this past weekend because my bacon dealer was hiding. <laughs> Uh, they got snowed out. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, will be dumping a small, four foot high Christmas tree into the uh, nice. park this weekend. I like that there are people that come around and collect them for their ponds. You know, to create a habitat for the fish. I guess fish eat eat them, and it's a good good sort of fish circle the, circle the, of life the thing. Lumberfish. The lumberfish. Lumber I'll, I'll, what kind first of fish? fact check of the day. Here yeah. We go. Hey, let's do it. First bare chested fact Whoa. check ever. Fish love. Pine needles. I mean, what do you think about water? Fish fucking it. Do you really want to drink that stuff? <laughs> oh, do you guys hear about the guy that's selling regular water that's not filtered? Yeah. That's cool. Did you hear about his real name? No. His real name is not Mukinder Singh. No? Yeah. Oh, it sounds very yogi. That's what I mean. Yeah. Jeremy? Uh... Do, 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 so, fact check topless. Do, 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 fact fair chested check, topless. Do, 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 Christmas trees make great habitat for many species of fish. And besides, why let them go to waste after Christmas is over? Um, they can't live inside a tree. They're not woodpeckers. No, but you throw them in the pond, and it and it creates a little habitat. Oh, a little, like a like sink, like, like a like sunken. A, and I think that uh, I gotcha. That's uh, cool. That's what all. Oh, that's what I. But you know, I don't own a pond, let alone many ponds <laughs> that would necessitate an yeah. entire rack of ponds. Fish, so, yeah, that would necessitate. <laughs> over by over by me, you know, Greenpoint is like fish central. The Polish love fish. So oh yeah, they do. The the the, well, week the fish previous, market by you. The pre the weeks previous to fish uh, to Christmas is just like an open air fish murder. Plus, <laughs> right across the street is <laughs> live carp in tanks. They have you know they take the. Uh, <laughs> they take the the tubs that they put the apples in in September and October oh, and wash them out and they, they put, put a... they put carp in them in December. <laughs> I don't know. They just looks they're both square. Okay, sue yeah. me if it's uh, not true. I'm uh, sorry. You're yeah, you're definitely spreading a rumor right now. Yeah, but they do some they do straight up fish murder on the street by me in uh, Christmas time. And does it smell? Or because it's cold it it's, doesn't it's yeah, not the same kind as of the like... snot the snot plugs up everything in here. You can't smell a thing. Right. It wasn't too bad this year, I'd have to say. I walked past a, uh, a uh, Greenpoint has these animal butcher spots that are like you just a big car garage, and then you look in there and you see boxes of chickens. Or I walked past one of those the other day, and as a uh, bootleg animal meat, yeah, as an animal lover, it's a little unsettling. Are but... you? You an animal lover? I love him. I want a puppy. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't want a puppy 
for himself. He wants to do a timeshare puppy, which I don't know if that's like a good thing. I don't think I don't think you would get the application if you were if you were adopting a dog and you said, "Eh, me and my three friends, I don't. We're gonna I don't yeah, really we're gonna co share the, the co share yeah. the the yeah. dog. Well, we're gonna need uh, we're gonna need tax returns from all four of you. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't see the point because you have a girlfriend. You know what I mean? But we both love puppies. So then if, she if should it, get the puppy. If it gets to the point, uh, if our if our relationship progresses to that point, then we'll get a dog, absolutely. We are two oh, huge th- fans. I was going to say, right now, your relationship is in the puppy stage, but right. maybe it will age into the dog stage. That's right. That's oh. cool. That's cool. And one day into the senior dog stage, God, dog, God willing. Senior dog well, that, stage? That's when you change the diet. That's her uh, one of her dreams, is to have a... a, a a farm where she can take in senior and aging animals. This is a scam. They're just warehousing them for the social security checks. <laughs> it's it's disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> Nursing homes do it. It's they do it all over. Pups llamas, lo- exploited Dogs llamas. Yeah. Who? What celebrity gave two uh, baby kangaroos to their spouse? That happened over Christmas. Can you fact check that? That's Paul, a second fact check. Paul, second Paul fact Hogan's. check. Here we go. I think it's. I think it's got to be like a. Uh, I think it's a country musician. If I had to guess, you're going to say you're going to say uh, Chenny Kesney. Kenny Chesney. Are you saying it's Chenny Kesney? Could be. I I'm I don't know why I know this information. I just do. Okay. Jer- Jeremy, I uh, it's, you it's, found it. It's searching and uh, or am I just a liar? We'll find still out. Still searching very yeah. soon. Do, 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 do you um. Do you um you come from Jersey? Um, yeah. Did you ever see anybody get a car with a bow on it for Christmas? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see anybody. I, I, that, don't, I that don't believe that. that. I, don't I don't believe, believe that, that that happens, happens. outside of yeah. Lexus world. Well, I do know that my fiance's boss, uh, not her boss, her dad's boss. Excuse me, my fiance's boss did nothing. <laughs> She didn't give her a Christmas bonus or anything. Well, she oh, yeah. hi- she hired her. So. Oh, yes. that. uh-huh. Luke true. Bryan got ah, his wife Luke a pair of baby kangaroos Bryant. for Christmas. Yeah. You know, the thing is... Bryant. Is that legal? No, because kangaroos will beat the shit out of you. I guess you They're can, like uh... the best fighters. That that cartoon wasn't just a thing. Kangaroos are excellent fighters. Yeah, no, I've seen that video of a guy boxing the... the yeah. there's, a, there's a video of a guy boxing a kangaroo for real because I he don't... was like fucking around. Get your ass kicked. Yeah. No, he he stunned him. He punched him. He punched him. <laughs> you can never see this video. It's definitely like... It's I've, been... seen, I've seen the video. I'm talking about the cartoon where there's yeah. the... The old right, mm. no, no, no. The old timey boxing gloves and the yeah, the Irish, that's, the Irish fight, the moving hands. That's how we got the Rock'em Sock'em robots. <laughs> <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em ruse. <laughs> so what is what is he going to do with those uh, kangaroos when they get older? I don't know, but Peta apparently was up in arms about maybe uh, you guys will have a, a f- maybe you guys will have a farm by then where you can take oh them, yeah yeah take them. Uh, <laughs> Off God. his tiny house and, so a, and have a, a tiny house and Jeremy's big in a farm. Jeremy's in a wheelchair because he got punched in the back, <laughs> <laughs> paralyzed from the waist up. Now it, it's fascinating to see them waist down. It's fascinating to see kangaroos fight because they lean back and sit on their tails and kick you. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. It is so scary. Because, yeah, no, no, thank you. Because it makes me want to have a tail. I I'm sorry, I lost mine. <laughs> back back when I you know the uh, the previous version of Dragon Ball Z uh, when they cut my tail off. Mm. Oh, is that it? Yeah. I mean, there are people. I had people in my college that would walk around with tails on. I think that still happens. Does I didn't that realize. Still happen? Yeah. Did they graduate? Yeah, they graduated. Wow. A, a doctor of telology, huh? <laughs> I don't know why that. I mean, uh, hey, teach their own. If you know, I. W- I wore as long as you I wore hurt, Adidas shell toes in high school. As long as you don't hurt anybody <laughs> so, to each their own. Yeah. Your your rights to exist yeah. can go as far as they don't impinge on my rights. Yes. And wearing a tail doesn't impinge on anybody's you rights. Want a, it's just a visual thing. Yeah. I mean you want a podcast shirtless, that's fine because you don't have a <laughs> because you don't have a guest. If it if there was a yes. guest I think most of our guests would probably pop their shirts right off. I think so. I think so. Uh they're pretty cool. They wouldn't have a choice a cool in people. this room. <laughs> yeah, it's very warm. It's very warm. Yeah, uh, what what happened warm. in here? Um, the old people upstairs happened. Obviously, mm. they cranked up the heat. Yeah, we'll get it. It's uh, it's a high heat time, middle of the middle of the winter. Mm. Yeah, nosebleed season. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. it's so dry in my apartment. Dude. You got to get a 
the humidifier or humidifier. Forget that, man. Just put pans of water on everything. I put pans of water on everything. Everything. Yeah, that's I do that. I walk around holding them. All of my all of my windows are open. It was five degrees below zero last week, and my both of my windows in the living room and in the bedroom were wide open. We should get more windows. I think maybe I should hang buckets from our things in here. I like that. I like that. Uh-huh. And then the mosquitoes came. Mm. Is that true? <laughs> Stagnant water oh, is for a sure. breeding ground for mosquitoes. Well, it's definitely over 60 degrees in here, and that's what mosquitoes need to breed. Mm. Dangerous. I have a billion dollar idea. I Let's think... breed mosquitoes in Jeremy's apartment. I, I think there were mosquitoes <laughs> breeding in the Christmas tree water. Ugh, I'm last, sure there were. Oh, week. yeah. yeah Gerard had a lot of bites at one point. Do but... you put a, a, an aspirin in the tree water when you... Put the tree up when you first put the tree up. What? No, I thought that was for cut flowers. No, I guess it's for Christmas trees. It, what uh, is that it supposed helps, to do? It helps them uh, avoid the shock or something. I don't know. Uh, have you um, have you gone to a, like a what do you call it lately, Dan? Like a Christmas tree farm out in PA, something like that with Kate. No, no, I haven't done anything like that. Uh, there's been not much of that. I did go to a ooh, I went to this place called Yako Taco. No, this is. That's a stupid thing. It doesn't exist. No, but I do go to a place called Yakos that had very delicious uh, hot dogs and pierogies, and that's like an Eastern PA thing. Was it a Polish place? Perhaps. I don't know. I mean, with a name like Yako, I don't know where they're from, but I couldn't tell. Uh, I heard Animaniacs is coming back. As a live action. No, no, they're going to (laughs) make... Oh, that would be cool. No, I heard that they're going to make... That would not be cool. I don't think that would be cool at all. Well, it would just be quite a strain on the actors. I don't think you could. I don't think you could maintain that frenetic pace for very long. I, Animaniacs was such a freaking smart show in the time. Like considering how old we were, and the number of jokes that they crammed in, and references yeah. that they crammed into every yeah. episode. Anyway, I heard it's coming back without um, some of the original cre- with the original creator. So that's a shame. But they're using some of the same voices. So I'm I'm torn. Mm. Yeah. Well, if they need any new voices, they know where to call. Not the not the A listers. No, no, We've those people are busy. This. Yeah, uh, does that work? There's a Skinamax fan fiction Pete and Pete movie about to be made in this room. Oh dear! God. <laughs> <laughs> pull somebody, uh, pull the handle. DVDs <laughs> will be on sale on our Patreon. Uh, at Patreon.com <laughs> somebody pull the emergency <laughs> brake right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, dudes, do you want to talk about the feral audio stuff at all? I mean, I know we haven't really discussed it, uh, but obviously, you, you listeners, you beloved listeners, probably have heard of a uh, change and no, no, no uh, feral blurbs at the beginning of our episodes, and we're sort of just uh, finding our way. So uh, we yeah, don't know what the future holds, but we, uh, we love talking to you all, and we can try we will to still it out. be making these podcasts for you. You just will no longer be able to get them at Feral Audio. As far as we know. <laughs> as far as we, we have, know. Yeah. We are also not committing to recording every podcast shirtless. This is a one-off. That's true. That is true. There's this no... is definitely a one-off, unless we have to come back here and it has nothing. And it has this kind of heat. It has nothing to do with us leaving Feral. Uh, no, just... we could have done this topless at Feral right, or, as well. Yeah, we could have done it shirt shirted today, too. We could have done it um, completely clothed. There's, right. no, there's no limits now. Right. Sky. Yeah. So Maybe sorry, sky. For, sorry for the confusion, but you can still find us on all of the yeah, normal, all your uh, preferred podcast yeah. listening uh, yeah. platforms, and we'll let you know where we land. Yeah, where we land there. Typically, yeah. I like to get onto the train uh, next to, and sit next to somebody who looks interesting, and then listen to whatever they're listening to by putting my head really close. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. how I find all my new podcasts. All your new pods. Yeah. And then, you know, I can't ask them because it's weird, so I have to just spy looks at their phone real quick to see if I can catch the name of the podcast. It's embarrassing. Okay, did well. Did you want to talk about Feral? I think we did. I think that's here? just what I wanted to say because, okay. uh, you know. A little, little clear of the air. I know air. there's been a lot of, yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, we, we honestly haven't haven't discussed it in detail, so that's something we're, we're going to do. But, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're in sort of in the dark like you all are. But just I want to assure you that. We love doing this, and yeah. we want to continue and we to do will, it. We will continue to do it, yes. And I hope everyone else that was on Feral continues doing what they're doing because uh, it was a a very well curated podcast network with a lot right. of do you great get paid, people. Doing... Do you get paid to say the word curated every time we record? I don't say it every time we record, but uh, it's in my personal lexicon. Jeremy, I have no way of checking that. <laughs> you live very close to the Brooklyn Museum. I think that's a problem. Oh my god! Well, that's that's. Accurate. I just yeah. I just joined the Brooklyn Museum. Actually, did you? Yeah, I became a member. That's cool. Yeah, you, I was can about on, my you can go on Saturdays and they have uh, or Friday nights. They do like member 
Yeah, first, shows, first you talk about first Fridays. Yeah, first Fridays. First Fridays have been good. My favorite art exhibit I've ever seen is it was there. It was uh, the Ron the Newick. video games. Oh. Uh, Ron Newick is a uh, s- ultra surreal uh, sculptor. I guess means more than surreal. And so he uh, he makes these incredibly detail. Uh, as close to real life as you could probably possibly get. Like he has a baby, a newborn baby, in a room, in in a room the size of this apartment. It's huge, and it's how just, big is the baby? It takes up the whole room. It's huge. It's like so. How big is the apartment? Ten feet tall. Well, this was in a art. You know, it was in the Brooklyn Museum. Oh, so in a big. The Brooklyn my, Museum is a very large building. Michael. My point is like it's like a twenty by twenty baby. Or, you know, it's huge. Or eighty by twenty baby. It's it it's. Uh, he does these very realistic um, babies. Human beings, yeah. So he'll do these. He has some little ladies that are like three feet tall that are ultra li- realistic. He curates uh, some other things. <laughs> that, no, but uh, he would but he's curate. Amazing. Yeah, he's yeah, he's creating. I know. I'm I know. Joking. You looked at me when you said that. I'm but I, you have to. If you're gonna make the joke, you gotta de- use the word properly. Wow. Okay. I have to curate the word properly. I got it. Oh my god. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, check out Ron Muick. He's uh, an amazing artist, and uh, he, check it's him very out. Fun to watch. And if he comes to your town, go see it. And speaking of that, we'd like to come to your town sometime. So support us on Patreon, and maybe that'll happen. If you live yeah. in if you live in San Francisco, we will be coming to your very town. valid point. At mm-hmm. the end of this month, we will be there on the twenty seventh of January. Uh, twenty sixth, twenty Friday night, Friday the twenty sixth, the twenty sixth of January. Live Danny and Mike nostalgia personified with Brian Altano from IGN from IGN at the. Uh, at the Sketch Fest at, at the Doc's S- Lab. Doc's sketch Lab fest. for. Uh, that's the name of the place that we're at. Oh, right. that's where it is? Yeah. Under, you can, under uh, the aegis of the Sketch Fest? Under the, yes, aegis mm-hmm. of SF Sketch Fest. And you can mm-hmm. find uh, links for those tickets on SF Sketch Fest stuff, or at SF Sketch Fest or at Danny and Mike. Or Brian Altano at Agent Bizzle. <laughs> yes. True, true, true. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, we would like to come to your town as well, even if, if you're not in if San you, Francisco. If you live in Pensacola, Florida, we'll be there in March, even though we won't have No, Jeremy. we'll be there in February. We'll be there the uh, February. 25th through 27th of February, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're mistaken. No, I don't think I am. No. I'm pretty sure Michael C. Morona. Jeremy, that, talk Jeremy, uh, talk to me, Jeremy, while Dan fact so checks what, this. Should we uh, Excuse do me, a, a Thunder Thunder? It's 23rd through 25th. There we go. Uh, February 2, 3 through 2, 5. Oh, man. That's coming up. Yes, it's mm-hmm. coming up. I better lose some weight. <laughs> you're fine. I can literally can yeah, tell. Yeah, I can tell. Fine. You look good. You look good. <laughs> That's true. Well. That's true. We don't have I to. Could be, yeah. I could be your great can't aunt hi- being like, you don't eat too much anymore. We can't, uh, we can't hide anything these days. No. no. Uh, but I guess... I Did you so. just put some tissues in your belly button? That is the most disgusting. For the listener, I that's the most. I, I might know. do them all from now on. Gerard, oh uh, God. Gerard loves his own belly button, and he loves my belly button, and he loves his mom's belly button. And uh, I think there was like a three week streak uh, straddling the new year last year in this that we just had to leave his um, onesies unsnapped all the time so he could get at, so he could <laughs> get, get at, at his it. belly button yeah. <laughs> and he just loved discovering it and finding mine and finding hers and any or Audi or him he's an any he's an any mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I'm an any you know when after he was born that shit just held on for weeks like he was born in October and he had that like extra piece of the umbilical cord for I don't know it came off before Christmas but it was wow. it was on but it was on there for a while like we were like waiting for it to fall off right because you're not allowed to pull it's got to come off on its own yeah because otherwise you don't your wish doesn't come true if you don't oh my god <laughs> you can also pull your urinary tract right straight it out. comes right out yeah. yeah but it's clean it's like uh, when you devein a shrimp it's the exact same oh boy well we just lost all expectant mothers we just lost Thailand <laughs> we just lost Thailand <laughs> India Louisiana and all the rest of the major shrimperies um going back to the to the meds update I I will say that <laughs> I probably wouldn't have done this shirtless episode had it not been uh, for the not meds been for feeling like a human being again we're so. confident yeah I definitely wouldn't have done a shirtless episode with you guys a couple of years ago, uh, but that's just because global warming hadn't advanced <laughs> right. to the to the point that it right. is now. I would always 
go topless. You pop it on. You were the most I, reluctant I was... one. Don't act like you're no, curated just, this that's thing. That's true. You were the last one to take your shirt off. Yeah, I know, but that wasn't because I didn't want to take my shirt off. It's just because you had trouble getting your little T-Rex it was just arms because around. It was just because I didn't know that that's what was going on. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, there wasn't a statement or a, a contract. Or it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like eyes wide shut where you get a password and everything. <laughs> <laughs> password. Fid- Fidelio. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I, I, I watched that movie once. Uh, what a freaky movie. Yeah. I mean, one, as one like I was, well, I was, in, I was in film school and Kubrick hadn't made a film in a while. And I, right. had, I was familiar with his old stuff. And this was something that he was working on currently, which was like. When you think about like Sidney Lumet doing a movie nowadays or something like that, mm. he's dead, but I know what you mean. Yeah, so is Kubrick. And uh, it was weird. Well, that was his last movie before he died. Very good. But uh, Spielberg finished it, I think. Is that true? Yeah, I think. No, I don't know if that's a fact check. That was AI. That was AI. I think they wanted him. You, um, you look at those things and you look at the, uh, you look at the digital the digital figures that they impose in different places and it's like that's a weird looking film it's a weird looking film mm. indeed mm. i did what see are you, what uh, are you writing down just some just some notes oh, cool. like get shirtless more <laughs> oh, <laughs> stuff like God. that a note to self yeah oh we could or, you more know tissue paper in my belly yeah button. we should do it I forgot about that completely we should do it like michael it's, keaton in night just, shift and just carry on little uh, handheld recorders and tell <laughs> <laughs> oh that's one of the greatest jokes in dirty work What's that? Is Norm Macdonald walking around with a recorder? Note to self. <laughs> yeah, he got it. He got it from from the Python. No, from I what? don't think so. Yeah. Oh no, I just remember a uh, night shift with Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton. Okay, they're um, and Shelley Long. Is that the right Shelley? I don't know. It's not Shelley Duvall. It. It's not Shelley Duvall. She she did the Kubrick work. Who did the Frankenstein? Mary Shelley. Yes. Wow. We have derailed. <laughs> Speaking of segues, they yes. uh, they work at um, at a mortuary or a, a coroner, and they conspire to run a prostitution ring out of there. This is night shift. Yeah. Hmm. I, I and they make a lot of money during my. Uh, uh, Wouldn't fly now. Wouldn't be able to make that movie now. You, are you saying like well, the, the plot could be obviated by cell phones? Yeah. Mm. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts because it's true. Yeah, you could make movies on a lot more flimsy uh, predicates. No, you can you can always make movies on flimsy predicates. It's just whether or not people will appreciate them as a as a stylistic it's, point. It's who you got to to pitch the idea to someone that has the money to make it. Mm. I think you can make a movie for very little money now. You you know people be making movies on their phone. People be making movies. They on got their that four K, yo, on phones. Did you I, say I day? Day got them. Day got that four K. Uh, people wow. make people make movies on their phones. Uh, ch- cameras are getting cheaper. The problem is, is that resolutions are getting sharper and more expensive. Hmm. I, I got out of the acting biz at the right time. You know what I mean? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at this <laughs> you know, you're shaggy. You're a little, a little dry. You know, your hair's shaggy. You're, you're you need some moisturizer on oh, your yeah. face, Michael. Gerard likes. Uh, there's this book that has you know like stuff you can touch and scratch and stuff, and mm-hmm. he likes. There's like a. Uh, a uh, chameleon and the orange are almost identical. They just they both feel like a basketball. You know, Why like is this a, orange alive? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then he walked over and and felt my face after he was doing a couple <laughs> things to get the scratch, get a feeling of daddy scratch. And I remember getting a you know beardies from my dad when I was younger and a little bit of torture. Yeah, you get the beardy. It's weird because I've always had like, back to the meds, but I've always had a weird thing with growing a beard. I've never been able to. Oh, it made your your hair fall out. <laughs> no, it just it's. Uh, there's a, there's something linked to like feeling like a man and having a beard, right? No, yeah, there definitely is. No, if you didn't have a beard and you never could grow one, there would be some sort of weird uh, anxiety. For, anyway, yeah, for me, for it you. was okay. Yes. That's fair. Go um, on. Go on. And be, and being and being uh, man, this is a very large uh, uh, meds meds episode. Uh, I guess we haven't done that in a while, though. Did you rub some formula on your face? No. Is my question. No, no. Like the, hor- saying, the horny like, goat weed, or, or mm. <laughs> mm. Like no? I'm just bull, saying bull that, balls. I don't know. What, what's what's like? Masculine? It's funny to hear like that sort of thing because I don't I don't uh, 
It's something I couldn't do. I couldn't pass on to my kid. You could my adopt. Kid would never know that. You could adopt, though. That's true. But I still wouldn't have a beard. <laughs> I can't adopt a beard. You could stick one. Speaking on. of that, I'm starting a Kickstarter. It's adopt a beard for Jeremy. Adopt a beard for Jeremy. <laughs> uh, we're also trying to lift the Magnits- Magnitsky Act sanctions so that Jeremy could possibly adopt a beard from Russia. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the rules are. Tough if you right only now. want to spend half price, I'm doing a Kickstarter so I can get full beard. Because I only yeah, get, patchy, I, get right? I get them patchy, uh, and I give a mustache. We could and, we and could a wait about goatee. we could wait about two weeks, and I'll have enough facial hair for both of you. Oh, mm-hmm. awesome! Mm-hmm. Okay, and cool. it'll be a thrill because it'll be red. So everybody will be like, Jeremy, I didn't know that about you. You'd be like, Yep, <laughs> uh, there's many layers to this onion, babe. That's right. The uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of red facial hair people out yeah. there that do not have red hair. Well, my mom's a redhead, so I, I wouldn't doubt if I did have. A, mm. Bless up the redheads. We are. Uh, I think we're just at. We're just holding right now, but we're probably not at replacement level in the population. So, this, this kid has been. This kid James in Rome, Georgia, has been reaching out to us to do the Ginger Pride Parade every single yeah, year. Yeah, uh-huh. we're just we're not going to be able to. It's hard to do, get down there, man. We're not going to be able to make it, but we uh, we appreciate the um, the sentiment because. Uh, One day, though, we are just going to show up. One day, we will just show up. Yeah, with no fanfare. Uh, No. We're not But if anybody in Georgia wants to subscribe to our Patreon and get us down there, we'll make sure that we can get there. You can vote Georgia. Because Rome, Georgia, the Ginger Pride Parade, you know, they don't have a budget. It'd be a destination. to get down there. Yeah. We just want to, uh, we're we're doing what we can right now to raise awareness, and uh, you should, if you see... Redheads on the street offer to reproduce with them in a way that does not make anyone un- uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Because at this point, it's science and it's about survival. So, is that true? Or no? Yeah. See, this is another hummus thing. No, we're no, idea. no, we're really you're a dying species. Well, we're just there's less of us each oh, okay. time. No, they keep saying that gingers need to make babies with other gingers to keep oh. the ginger gene in there. And this is why I Pure. want this is why I want Rose Leslie to dump Kit Harrington and get with me because uh <laughs> I have the correct genes and he just has millions of dollars and uh a, a mouth a, a mouth with lots of feelings. <laughs> um but she And he's uh, already died. She works come back to life. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, she works on the good fight, which I've been working on occasionally, and is just has a, a wonderfully smoky voice. Just kind of a mm. how I don't know how you would characterize it, but uh, female version of my voice. We just God knows <laughs> you mean that cholesterol <laughs> voice. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, cholesterol Who said voice. That? We haggis. discussed that Who's, on another podcast. Fuck cholesterol voice guy. But then they said that you smoke cigarettes too, and that's not true. But anyway, when not. when he found them on the ground. Well. That's well, a different that was in middle middle, school many decades and in, ago. And in middle school, I kind of talked like this more, so I was trying so to smoke cigarettes so to. I could start talking like this. Yeah, that's that's why I smoked cigarettes, so I could didn't have to outrun Jerry Orbach in every single take of the <laughs> Law and Order episode we did. <laughs> it didn't work. I still outran him. Yeah. And I'm, I, uh, I'm sorry I smoked. My dad smoked. My sister smokes. Mm. My brother smoked. My, my, gran- my grandpa smoked. My grandma smoked. My 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 side of the family has broken that. Uh, my dad smoked. My mom smoked for a little bit. Uh, none of us smoke, which is these a very guys. Positive thing. These guys smoke. They smoke. They taught a dog to smoke too. <laughs> they taught him to beg for cigarettes. He'd go right up, and you'd know what he was waiting for. <laughs> Can't remember what that's from, but the kids uh, in the hall. There you go. I taught a dog to smoke. Yeah. Uh, anything else we want to? Uh, in cap this episode with I would say in conclusion listen to your body listen to your body do not listen to your racist relatives mm. uh, go get help right away right don't let it fester yeah right yeah. don't bury it Dan in. yeah don't let it fester do not do not mm. you know even if you you know it's shitty as it is but even if you don't have health insurance and you think that something's wrong that you can figure it out walk into a hospital and pay one dollar a month for yeah. five hundred years. <laughs> we're going. We're going to. Um, we're going to take back uh, the house, so we'll probably be able to pass something uh, next Let's year. Let's hope so. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. I will say that when I was going through the stuff, the med- the insurance part is very rough. And if I were, it sucks shit, man. In a point, at a point where I was in a deeper and darker place, I don't. It's just like it, it's very off putting, but I will. Oh, say when that. I was when I was looking for help a year and a half ago, man, it was oh. like it, it, the the system is set up to confound oh. you every single yeah. way, and it's it's 
your inertia is is geared towards not getting yourself help at that point. So it's, right. it's kind of, we need to have a much more proactive system and uh, the patchwork that we have right now throughout New York State and the country is just yeah. is not giving us the right results. And it's, you see it all over the place. And it's sad to say that the we... The jail is not a fucking mental hospital. And, right. and jails all over the place have people in, who, in them who should not be there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I think even in 2018, I about said 17, but in 2018, there's still a lot of work to be done with uh, recognizing mental health and figuring out how to 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 treat it and even get the access to getting the treatment because it's just it's not crazy to podcast topless if you're doing it willingly. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it, if you have a compulsion, it's different. It's been kind of nice. I'm gonna not I'm not lying. This for, is much cooler for the listener. Uh, Dan is not glistening like he usually does. That's true. You're welcome. And yeah, it's uh, luckily only our Patreon uh, people will, will know about That's that. Right. <laughs> well, speaking of that, we, you can find us at patreon.com slash Danny and Mike. Uh, you can find me at, at Remy Balin on the social media accounts. I have a podcast called Fresh Beef uh, where we talk about uh, internet complaints. Uh, and um, this is uh, Michael C. Morona, at Michael C. Morona on his uh, social accounts. With the C spelled out, letter C. <laughs> and this is uh, at D. Tamborelli on most social accounts. Yeah, or Danny Tamborelli yeah. on Instagram. There you go. Mm-hmm. So give us a follow, and uh, we're so glad that you are tuning in. And we'll, uh, yeah, we're, we're psyched to bring you more in, the, in this new year. We're not part of any network, and thanks for listening. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> nope, yeah. Well, you, there are, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll throw out a fresh beef. It's like this... You know, there are other, is, there's some great other podcasts that come uh, out of this yeah, very room. basement this very studio, in yeah. this, this coming, very room. Coming straight out of Seltzer King Studios to, right. to your ear hole. Uh, this is the podcast. That's right. All right, y'all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. The Adventures of Danny and Mike stars Danny Tamborelli and Michael C. Maroney. The show is produced by Jeremy Bailey. For more information on the guys, visit our website at dannyandmike.com. Also, look us up on Twitter at Danny and Mike with the and spelled out and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the adventures of Danny and Mike. Thanks for listening.